Hilingin po nating muli ang tulong ng ating Panginoon sa pag-aaral natin ng kanyang mga salita. Tayo po yung manalangin. Aming dakilang Diyos at aming Ama, iniwanan mo kami ng iyong malinaw na kalooban sa pamamagitan ng Bibliang mayroon kami. At ngayong kami, Panginoon, ay mag-aaral nito. Patuloy po kaming humihingi ng tulong dahil alam namin that the natural man cannot just discern the things of the Spirit. At maging kami ng mga mananampalataya, may mga struggles pa rin, Panginoon. Not merely in understanding, but mostly, Panginoon, in believing and responding in faith. And so help us and enable us that we may see what we need to see from your word through the ministry of your spirit that is in us. Grant our request so that each one of us may behold Christ as he is. For it is in his name that we ask this blessing. Amen. Ginag-aaralan natin nang may pagtuon ang turo ng Biblia halos patungkol sa kaligtasan. At alam natin na ang kaligtasan na tinutukoy ng Biblia ay nakatuon doon sa tinatawag nating promise Jewish Messiah na dahil sa bagong tipan ay malinaw at alam nating walang iba kung hindi ang ating Panginoon at tagapagligtas na si Jesus. Sa plano ng Diyos ng pagliligtas na halos tinatalakay ng buong Biblia, mayroong ginamit na framework ang ating Diyos. Hindi siya nag-operate Basta-basta lamang kung hindi mayroon siyang framework na kung saan doon niya unti-unting inilabas, unti-unting ipinakita at ipinagawa yung pangako niyang pagliligtas pa rin bagamat ang lahat ng nilalang ay nagkasala at naging alipin ng kasalanan. Ang framework na ito ay yung tinatawag nating covenant. It is through the covenant that God, in His sovereignty, in His divine choice, operated yung promise niyang kaligtasan. Kaya nga inaalam nating mabuti yung relasyon ng Jewish Messiah dito sa covenant na ito. At para lubos na maunawaan ito, dumako tayo doon sa pasimula kung paanong nagsimula ang lahat ng ito. At kung naalala nyo, last Sunday, sinabi ko na nagbigay din ang Genesis ng summarized and simple presentation of what you will have in redemptive history. It began in Genesis 2, verse 25, hanggang verse 24. I am in chapter 4 ng Genesis. Yung Genesis 2 will talk about the goodness of God toward doon sa nilikha niya na ayon sa kanyang sariling wangis. Placing them in the garden, Providing for them everything that is good. Kaya nga yun yung presentation, the Edenic life of God's people. Pagdating mo sa chapter 3, nagkaroon ng interruption doon sa Edenic life that led to God's punishment 
but primarily the punishment na embody doon sa tinatawag na enmity. Kaya nga pagdating mo sa chapter 4, di ba magugulat ka, ang chapter 4 po nagsimula about this enmity. Pinakita ka agad sa inyo yung pagtutunggali. So yung enmity sa chapter 4 will picture to you the rest of the Bible. The rest of the Bible will be a story of that enmity. Hanggang sa pagdating ng Messiah na pagdangako ng Diyos, hindi pa rin siya hihinto. Only in His second coming that finally, yung pinicture po na old serpent will be totally vanquished. Doon lang po mahihinto yung enmity. Kaya nga, napakalaga sa mga nag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos na maunawaan mo yung chapter 2 beginning verse 25 hanggang chapter 4. Yung makikita mo sa chapter 4 is just the picture to you of the effect of the disruption. At alam natin, it is God who put that enmity. At yung enmity na yun, makikita natin doon. So in other words, ito yung magpapaliwanag sa atin. Bakit ganito ang tao? Bakit ganito ang mundo? Bakit kailangan ng tagapagligtas? Bakit nagkakagulo ang mga tao pagdating sa tinatawag na relihiyon? It is all already summed up in that cosmos presentation. Ito yung cosmos, di ba? Kaya nga yung beginning, kung babalikan nyo, Di ko nabasa pa paano sinimulan sa Tagalog yun. But when you begin, in chapter 2, verse 25, I mean, in chapter 2, makikita natin na ito yung picture. Pero pagdating sa chapter 4, makikita natin nung no, nagka-anak na, kitang-kita natin, yung enmity. But that enmity started when chapter 2 says nayari ang langit at ang lupa at ang lahat ng mga bagay na mga iyon. Yung pinag-aralan natin ng ikapatong araw natapos ng Diyos ang gawain na Kanyang ginawa. Nakita natin yung pagbabasbas doon sa araw na pinag-aaralan natin kanina sa Sunday School na tinawag na Sabbath. And then beginning verse 5, nandun na yung halamanan ng Eden. Pinakita sa atin in summarized form, again, parang sabi nga ng iba, ano yan, ulit lamang. No? It's showing now to you beginning in verse 5, uh, to correct, parang verse 25 na sabi ko, verse 5, yung Edenic life, na kung saan, nakita natin, ang highlighted, yung goodness ng Panginoon, doon sa kanyang nilalang. Pero pagdating mo, sa so chapter 3, inintroduce yung Ahan. So, Kaya nga po yung covenant malaga because the covenant is talking about God's relationship with man. Ano na ang naging relasyon ng Diyos sa tao bago nagkaroon ng kasalanan? Noong nagkasala ang tao, ano na ang relasyon ng Diyos sa kanila? At alam natin, doon nagkakatalo-talo even among reform kung ano yung relasyon na yon ng Diyos. But whatever term you use doon sa una, 
karamihan po ng who hold the Westminster ang ginamit nilang description, covenant of work. We do not agree with that and even those who hold on the Westminster yung iba pong mga theologian nila na mga Presbyterian din will not take fully yung term because pag binasa mo yung covenant of works ang dami nilang sinasabi na hindi mo naman makita doon sa scripture kagaya ni John Murray for example ang ginamit niya lang it is an Adamic administration kaya nga tinatanong natin yung ating sarili may covenant ba doon o wala so ang mga naniniwala na Reform Baptist hindi nag-hold doon sa covenant of works. <coughs> But what term would you use? No? So, may covenant. Bahati din tayo mga Reform. Like Greg Nichols who has influenced many of my teachings on this issue. Sabi niya, ang term niya is Adamic Covenant. I don't agree with him sa, dahil I don't believe there is a covenant there. So I would rather be close dun sa isang para silang teacher sa TMA. I would be close dun sa term na ginamit nung nagtuturo ng Biblical Theology si Pastor Robert Fisher. It is a creation bond. But whatever term you use, no, make sure na yung sinasabi mo hindi malapit sa speculation. I believe yung sinasabi ng Westminster concerning doon sa covenant of works, malapit sa speculation. That's why sinabi ko sa inyo, ako yung pastor na takot lumapit sa bangin. Hindi ako naglalakad ng malapit sa bangin. No. Gusto ko mga one kilometer away ako doon. <laughs> Sigurista ako. No. So, uh, para sa akin, it is just a fatherly prohibition. A paternal prohibition. Ngayon, nandun tayo sa ikalawa, which is God's relationship with man after the fall. Malaga ito <coughs> kasi dito na introduce yung isa pang theological term siguro na naririnig ninyo yung covenant of grace. So another terminology na sa pagbalik ko pa natin titignan ng mabuti. <coughs> But sa ating pag-aaral po ng chapter 3 tapos na tayo doon sa Unit 1, yung occasion of the fall, at nakita natin, ay occasion niya ay yung pagpasok ng isang serpent who tempted Eve. Diba? Primarily si Eve yung kanyang tinem. Using evaluative question about God, and about the will of God. So yung evaluative question na yon, ang naka, naka-hook up sa isipan ni Eve to the point na nakita ninyo na apektuhan siya. Maging yung kanyang kaunawaan sa kalooban ng Diyos. Kumbaga sa ang Diablo dinideny o kini-question sa una yon but ang purpose niya is to deny na totoo yung sinasabi ng Diyos that you should you will die. Si Eve naman pinahirapan niya. Do not touch pero wala din yun. So unti-unti nakikita mo na apekta niya man niya until ano ba talaga yung kasalanan ni Eve? It was not a direct rebellion. But it is, ano, deception. Eve was deceived. Ano yung deception all about? It is the quest for wisdom. Diba? Sabi ng Diablo, uh, 
Diba? You should be like God. How can you be like God if you do not know what is good and what is evil? God knows that. So, kailangan mo yun para talagang maging nasa image ka ng God. So, ganun nga ang nangyari. Eve desired to be like God, but she was deceived. Nakalimutan niya, she is already made in the likeness and image of God. Kaya na-deceive siya. Kasi nga, I have to be like God. Kunyari tayo, di ba? So, paano ka magiging like God? Eh, kaya sabi niya, kaya pinagbawal sa iyo ng Diyos yan dahil hindi naman totoo ng Diyos. Ayaw talaga ng Diyos na maging katulad kanya. And so, if desired for that. And then later on, nabasa natin na si Adam also ate. Adam was not deceived. The New Testament is clear. Only if E ba't nag-take si Adam? The proposal that I shared with you, I shared with my former teacher na si Pastor Greg. It is because Adam had to make a choice. Well, yung flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone, will he separate from her or not? If he chooses God, papano yung help meet niya? Kaya nga, hindi, hindi deception yung masalanan ni Adam. It was a willful choice between God and wife. At makikita natin later yung statement ni Adam nung kinwestiyon siya ng Lord. Makikita mo talaga. Doon na pati siya naguluhan na rin. Okay? So, yun po yung pinag-aaralan natin. Yung unit yung occurrence ng fall sa verse 6. Yun yung pinag-aaralan natin last time. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. And this morning, we'll just talk about the immediate results of the fall. Kagaya na sabi ko sa inyo, medyo mabagal lang tayo na konti. And then, the exposure and judgment of the fall in verses 8 to 19. So, konti lang yung sinabi natin dyan sa verse 7 na yan. It's more about yung eyes of both of them were open. They knew that they were naked. They stood fig leaves together and made themselves covering. Eh, Di ba sinabi ko sa inyo in very short na nagkaroon nga sila ng knowledge but it is a knowledge that they had but from the standpoint of committing sin rather than from the standpoint of remaining faithful to God. So, let's begin to consider the exposure and judgment of the fall. In Genesis 3, 8, And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Yung salita pong, the sound of the Lord God, ito po ay very common sa Pentateuch. Doon po sa aklat na sinulat ni Moses, yung limang libro. Especially in Deuteronomy, where along with the verb hear or obey, kung ginamit yan in relation to may narinig ka, may inuuto sa iyo ang Diyos, it becomes the common form of expression for the Lord's call to obedience. They heard the sound of the Lord. It is like hearing what? The Lord's call to obedience. Kaya nga, tignan mo yung response nila. Adam and his wife hid. 
You see? Now I know why I know. God's word about the fall is introduced with a description of Adam and Eve's attempt to hide themselves when they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Ito yung time for their solemn fellowship with God. But I believe the time is not being mentioned kasi literally, hindi naman cool of the day in the wind of the day. It's not talking about time katulad nung naalala nyo yung ke, ke Elijah. He heard, di ba, the wind rushing. The presence of the Lord coming. So yun po, although maraming are talking about the time for their solemn fellowship, but just try to understand, it's really a time of fellowship, but it's more about not thinking about literal time na morning bato o evening, mas malamig sa gabi, so siguro medyo gabi yon, or kagaya ng isip ng iba, it may be the Sabbath day. Where the Lord meets with them. So, iba iba yung view. But sa akin, it's just repairing the time for them to appear before God's presence. Kung baga sa ano, nung nilagay sila sa garden na yan, it seems na they were expecting the Lord to be there. So, a time uh, that they appear also before the presence of the Lord. Because the text says they hide from Him. So, do lamang but Adam and Eve knew they disobeyed God. So they hid themselves from God's presence among the trees of the garden. Isang Old Testament scholar, si John Shale Hammer, uh, medyo paborito ko siya, although there are things na uh, sa mga Ibang beliefs niya na hindi ako makapagsang ayam. But here, he has a very good observation concerning the trees of the garden. Gusto ko siyang basahin. Sabi niya, it is significant that the author calls attention to the hiding place. They fled to the trees. Throughout this chapter and the previous ones, the trees play a central role in depicting humanity's changing relationship with God. Meron daw nakikita siya sa pagkakasulat ni Moses that these trees has something else to show to us. Ano yun? Yung humanity's changing relationship with God. First, sabi niya, in chapters 1 and 2, the fruit trees were the sign of God's bountiful provision. So, yun yung dinidipik. Pag nagsalita ang Diyos sa trees, parang yan yung goodness ng Lord in providing for all our needs. Then, sabi niya, at the beginning of chapter 3, the trees became the ground for inciting the man and the woman to rebellion and the place where the rebellious man and woman sought to hide from God. Yun yung naging means para matem sila. And at the same time, nung mahulog sila, yun din yung means na ginamit ng man para magtago sila. But finally, he says, when the man and the woman are cast out of the garden, their way is barred from the tree of life. The full sense of this focus on the tree should perhaps be understood in the light of the role of the tree as the place of punishment of death. And also in the light of the later role of the tree as the place of the gift of life. Kasi, itong tree na to became the place for punishment, yung cross. 
Pag binabanggit the tree, hanging on the tree. Ito rin ginamit ni Paul sa Galatians in Galatians 3.13 to show to us that the hanging of the cross or being hung on that tree is also the place of the gift of life. Diba sa Deuteronomy 21, beginning verse 22, If a man has committed a sin deserving of death, and he is put to death, and you hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain overnight on the tree, but you shall surely bury him that day, so that you do not defile the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance, for he who is hung on the tree is a curse of God. That idea, Paul picked up in Galatians 3 verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. Pero yung hanging ni Jesus Christ is not merely talking about uh, the curse because through that it became life for us. Diba? So, sabi ko maganda yung biblical theology na prinisent niya concerning why the tree is always being mentioned it is showing a change of God's relationship with man still it's being connected to that tree and later on if you go to Revelation even the tree of life will again be allowed to be accessed by God's people so the coming of the Lord in the garden should have been a time sana of refreshment and delight. Diba yung binanggit ni <coughs> kanina, naalala nyo ni Pastor, the intention of that uh, Sabbath which is a fellowship with the Lord, if it is a delight to you, a refreshment. But it now was a time of fear. Yung nakita natin. Fear to stand before the presence of God. So dito pinapakita that Adam and Eve knew that their attempt to cover themselves failed. They knew their own covering was completely inadequate. And they were really embarrassed before God. And it is while hiding na tinawag sila ng Diyos. And the encounter led to God exposing and judging their sin. God's only words to Adam and Eve come in the form of questions. Diba? In the coming of the serpent to Eve, question. Tapos ito naman ang Diyos, in coming, He uses also question. Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, Yung question ng Diablo is evaluative question. Kasi nga, he wants to deceive it. Diba? Yung statement, ginawa niyang question. Gusto niya si Eve, evaluate niya yung sinabi ng Diyos. Ganun din ang ginagawa ngayon ng Diablo. Diba? Sasabihin natin, kapag ka wala ka kay Kristo, sigurado, Parurusahan ka ng Diyos sa impyerno. Di ba sasabihin ng taong, hindi naman siguro ganun ang Diyos. Ang Diyos eh, Diyos ng pag-ibig eh. Di ba? He, he will not eh. Bakit pa tayo, kung good God siya, why would He send anyone to hell? So, evaluative. You begin to evaluate. Kaya nga, tayo po, para malaman nyo kung you are being led to temptation, Siyempre mga Kristiyano kayo, marami kayong alam na salita ng Diyos. Ipapa-evaluate sa inyo yan. Once your, your mind begins to evaluate, huwag kang mag-asawa ng unbeliever. 
ganito o kaya yun? No. Magtatanong kayo, eh, bakit si kapatid na ganito, nag-asawa ng unbeliever, okay naman siya. Oh, you see? You, you began to evaluate what God clearly stated as thou shall not for a believer. When it happens sa mind nyo, you are being drawn into temptation. Pag kinagat mo yan, nag-enter ka na. Nung kinagat ni Eve yun, pumasok siya. Mahirap po lumabas pag pumasok ka. And so here, God began exposing the man in verses 9 to 12. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, The woman whom you gave me with to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. Di ba kayo nagtataka bakit? Sasabihin, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. Ano naman kinalaman ng pagiging naked niya? Tapos sinanong siya ng Lord, Who told you that you are naked? Ano kinalaman nun? What is that? What is there in that nakedness? Bakit yun ang issue? So, notice, the Lord had called. No, kasi nga, spiritually, nung pumunta ang Diyos doon, the spiritual separation was already working. Yung ginagawa ni Adam and Eve is just the result of what sin did. And the first thing is, you shall surely die. The death that God is talking about is their separation from Him. Yung physical death, karagdagan lang yun. Late nung babang kasi niya, you shall return to the dust. Karagdagan yun. But primarily, it's talking about that separation. At yung nakita nating pagtatago, it's just an expression. Kaya nga, pagbalik ko, we'll be talking about sin and its effect. Kasi dyan, lumabas, pag pinag-aralan mong mabuti, dyan dapat pinag-aaralan yung dalawang epekto sa man, total depravity and total inability. Pag-aaralan natin yung original sin, yung sinabi ko sa inyo, Diba? Representative sin, actual sin. After that, kailangan tignan natin ano yung nangyari sa tao. Nagkaroon siya ng depravity because of this, nagkaroon siya ng inability. Kailangan maunawaan natin yun. Kaya nga, hindi mo na mag-Sunday school si Ranji sa May, pahinga siya ng konti. Yun ang pag-aaralan natin sa Sunday School, aside from yung preaching. Because I think this is the time that you and I, or you should learn where to study it clearly. No? Marami sa inyo alam, hindi ako mahilig sa systematized theology. I'm more on the exegetical. Doon lumabas yun. At dahil doon, kung totoo yun, Kung yun ang epekto, paano maliligtas yung tao? Kailangan may gawin ng Diyos. Hindi lamang through Christ, but doon sa tao. Nandun yung effectual calling. No? Yung irresistibility. You see? Yun ang magiging pundasyon. Kaya nga kailangan maunawaan mo yun. Dito, hindi lang yung reform theology. It is the consequences of the fall. Hindi lamang na ang lahat naging ganun. May nangyari din doon sa tao because of sin. But dito, ang kailangan nating maintindihan, 
bakit ganito yung usapin? Bakit mayroong naked naked na sinasabi niya, I was naked. And because I was naked, I hid myself. And then God said, who told you that you're naked? You see, God is seeking man in the garden with a simple question. Where are you? Eh, alam naman natin, hindi naman yan yung talagang hindi alam ng Diyos. He is omniscient. Sabi nga ng isang writer, I quote, This question was spiritually designed also to alert man to his tremendous lost condition. Ina-alert na ng Diyos na nagbago na yung kalagayan mo. Asan ka na ba talaga sa buhay mo? At tanong din natin yan. Diba? When we come to God, where are you? Right now, in your relationship with God. Where am I? As a Christian right now. I claim to be a Christian, but where are you? And only when man sees his lost condition in relationship to God, alam natin, will he be saved? Hanggat hindi makarating ang tao doon, hindi niya iisipin na gusto niya si maligtas. At dahil hindi niya na, na, hindi siya makarating doon sa isipin niya, kailangan ko maligtas, hindi rin talaga siya magkaka-interest kay Jesus on a personal level. Si Jesus, mag- mananatiling isang doktrina lamang ng Christianity sa kanya. Isang katuroan na dapat bang paniwalaan o hindi. Yun nga yung epekto ng inability. Yung depravity. Nagahalo yun sa kanya. While Satan's question was designed to being about the fall of man, I would say na yung pagtatanong ng Diyos is meant to bring about reconciliation and restoration. It was designed to bring Adam to our realization of his sinfulness so that he could confess his sin before his God. Ano yung initial answer niya? I was afraid. Second, I was naked. Third, I hid myself. But the focus, focus your attention to say statement niya, I was naked. Pag naiintindihan niyo yun, maintindihan niyo bakit siya afraid, bakit siya nagtago. It is important to note that two different but related words are being used to describe the nakedness of the man and his wife in this narrative. Makikita lang yan sa Hebrew. Kung maruno ka magpasa ng Hebrew, makikita mo yan. Kasi keyword yan, ang una pong play of words dyan ay nangyari between nakedness and craftiness ng devil. Alala niyo yun? Yun po. Yung nakedness po, sa Hebrew, arom. You read it is as arom. Yung cunningness and craftiness ng devil is arom. O, kanyo? O, and you. Pareho-pareho sila pag tinignan mo. And it provides an immediate clue sa nakakaintindi ng konti to the potential relationship between the serpent's cunningness and the innocence implied in that nakedness. Kasi doon sa original, di ba, nung binanggit yung nakedness nila, nung ibig sabihin nun, Diba? Nakakabit na pag binasa mo, may kinalaman doon sa parang innocence nila. Diba? Innocence. They were not ashamed. Shameless. Wala yung issue na yon. Pero yung second yung nandito, yung difference in the meaning between sa chapter 2 verse 25, and chapter 3, verse 7, verse 10, verse 11. Kasi, ginamit ni, ni Adam, di ba, nakedness ni Adam, arong, pero, 
before God at yung ginamit din ng Diyos sa kanya ang pagtatanong ng iba. No? Kung arum yon dito po, a room. A room. A o A. Pareho kasi sa Hebrew po, ang root ng mga word, tatlo lang na consonant. Pare-pare yung consonant, nag-iba. Yung vowel. A room. A room. So, mahalaga maintindihan yung pinili ni Moses na word na Aaron. So, in distinguishing the first state of human nakedness from the second, no, Aaron to Aaron, the author has introduced a very subtle yet perceptible clue to the meaning of the story. The effect of the fall Iba nangyari na. The effect of the fall was not simply that man and woman came to know that they were a Rome. Yung nakedness. But specifically when the writer used a Rome, they came to know that they were in the sense of being under God's judgment. Okonyo? So, kung ipaparaphrase mo yun, kung ilalagay ko yun, ano yung magiging ano? So, sabi niya, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I know I'm under your judgment and I hid myself. Why was he afraid? Because he know he is now under God's judgment. Why is he hiding? Because he knows he is under judgment. And God said to him, Who told you that you are under judge my judgment. Kaya dinugtungan, have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? Now, ang ginagamit, di ba, ng Diyos, dun sa, who told you that you were naked? Same word, Aaron. Hindi Aaron, Aaron. Yung sinabi ni, ni Aaron. Who told you? You are under my judgment. Have you eaten? So, tinutulungan na siya ng Diyos. Doon. Kaya ang kuha niyo. Ngayon din yan yung klaro. Di ba? Ang ganda. Ako nung pag binabasa kaya na, nasutuwa talaga ako. Mas naiintindihan ko kung ano yung nangyayari doon sa story. No? Kaya nga siya nagtago. Kaya siya natatakot. Eh sino bang hindi kung under judgment ka? Eh, yung coming ng Lord, it is a coming. It is a call to obedience. You come. In my presence. Eh, may atraso ka. Di ba? May nagawa kang, ano, di ka ba matatakot? Di ka ba magtatago? Normal. Yung kanya, nangyari sa kanya. And this is what I believe as the reason why <coughs> it was said of Adam, I was afraid. And I hid myself. He know that he is now under God's judgment. Sin and guilt bring fear. And great fear comes when one realizes he is guilty before God. For God alone has the right to judge men. Seeking cover, hiding in the tree, surely will follow those. Who has this fear? But Adam was afraid of God's judgment and his condemnation, and so he decided to hide from the presence of God. So, nakita natin, he was reluctantly admitting his shame and fear. Ano yung shame niya? To be under God's judgment. Tatay mo yun, pero under judgment ka. You're God's son. So yung initial response niya was a reluctant admission of his shame and fear, probably hoping that God would not press him so much. But God probed more deeply, seeking admission of wrongdoing. Have you eaten? See? Have you eaten? 
God gives a straightforward question. It's never evaluative. Have you? And it deserves a straightforward answer. Yes or no? Diba? Pag tinanong kayo ng pastor, yes or no? Pero, pag nagtatanong ka ng yes or no, uh, kasi pastor, ano eh, <laughs> just say to me, yes or no? <laughs> Gustong-gusto natin, dahilan muna, palusot muna, ganyan ang bibig natin. Diba? A simple yes, an admission of guilt, guilt would suffice for an answer. So when Adam finally, uh, when God finally heard, Adam said, ano bang nando sa dulo? Nung verb. Diba? I ate. Yun talaga yung dun dapat papunti. Pero hindi. Ano muna sinabi niya? Have you eaten? Then the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. <laughs> oh, natawa tayo kasi ganyan tayo eh. Oh, pag nakakorner, ganyan tayo. What was Adam's response? Adam blames Eve and God. Both Eve and God must share in the responsibility for my fall. Gusto natin may, may ibang tao mag-share ng sin natin. Kaya ako lang naggawa to dahil kay brother so and so eh. Dahil kay pastor, dahil sa ganito eh. Kaya ako nagkaganito. We won. And that was what Adam is doing. Gusto niya si even and, and God must share in the responsibility for the fall. And his part was mentioned last. I, and I ate. <laughs> Doon ako sa dulang. Unang may kasalanan, si Eve. Yung Diyos, may share kayo. Kaya ako nagkaganito. Parating dulo ka eh, pagkasalanan. Pero pagka tama, parati ka nasa una. Di ba? Ganyan. Parati, ang nangyayari. He's saying that, no? Because he was afraid hindi niya afraid siya doon sa consequences. Afraid siya, hindi niya pa kasi alam kung anong gagawin ng Diyos sa kanya. He was still hiding. He was hiding under the back of Eve and hiding now this time at the back of God Himself. O di ba? O kaya tatahit sa mga tao, di ba? Pastor, alam mo namang tao lang ako eh. Talaga. <laughs> so, huh? we, we can hide anywhere. We will play somebody. Kung hindi trees, no? Eh, tao lang ako. May hina talaga tao. O, hindi. Remaining sin lang. Kasi, ano, hindi pa ako 100%. Eh, samantalang, are you guilty? Yes or no? Huwag ka na magdadahilan. No? Adam passes the buck, sabi nga na isang writer, and blames his eating on Eve. But Adam ultimately does not blame Eve, but God. For it was God who gave Eve to him. Eh, ano sinasabi ni Adam? He is saying, God, God made a mistake. Pero, rationalization lang yan. Nang isang tao who, at that time, doesn't want to own responsibility for sin. Ba't nagkakaganon si Adam? The effect of sin is there already the inability, the depravity is showing up. Sanya. Adam's words, in fact, is an ironic reminder of God's goodness towards him. Diba? It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. To show to you how the depravity is working on in Adam, the author shows that the man saw God's good gift as the source of his trouble. Imagine that. Diba? 
Kasi siguro kung medyo maigpit ka, that blast famous. Pero mo, diretso sinabi niya sa Diyos yun, the good gift <coughs> that you have given to me is not good because it became the source of my trouble to you. I'm under your judgment because of that so-called good gift. It's not good. But in the end, though pointing to others, Adam knew. He really ate. So he admitted his violation of God's single restriction given to him in the garden. And I ate. But he did it indirectly that it was he who ate of the tree. It's not really a full confession. And as soon as he stated his admission, there was no more probing question he heard from God. Because God was questioning to help him come to that point. Diba tinanong na siya, yun lang naman dapat ang sagot. Pero makikita mo yung epekto ng sin sa buhay. Kaya nung narinig ng Diyos, and I ate. Wala na tanong. Kasi gusto ng Diyos, aminin niya sa harapan niya. Did you eat? Eh dapat maaga pa lang. Di ba pag-repentan tayo? Yes, Lord, I ate. Lala, Laila. Di ba nung si David, nung mahimasmasan? I have sinned against you, and you, I have sinned. 100%. No excuses. The exposure of the woman, verse 13, And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? But the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. God's question was put very softly to Eve than the blunt question to Adam. Diba? Mas soft. Siguro, kasi nga, alam ng Diyos, Eve is a weaker vessel. So, very gentle pa rin. What is this you have done? Diba? Eve admits that she ate, but again, not before she tries to blame the serpent for her act. Pero yung approach nila ni Adam, because the effects of sin in anyone is the same. It will produce depravity. It will produce inability. Si nakikita niya, pareho pareho lang. Ang approach nila. Pareho kasi, epekto ng sin, sino man yung tao. The serpent, sabi niya, deceived me. But he said, and I ate, no more questions from God. No more probing questions. Though nag-blame siya ng iba, yet the Lord heard her saying, I ate. And so no, no, no more probing on his part. We can see with the way Adam and Eve responded to God that their allegiance is now connected to the serpent. No? Distorting the truth, accusing God and each other, excusing themselves from accountability. Nakita nyo ba kay Adam yon? Nakita nyo kay Eve? Nandun siya. Anong nakikita nyo? Their allegiance is now connected with the serpent. They are unable to disconnect themselves. The inability is slowly demonstrated. Diba? Hindi sila makasagot lang ng I ate. Patawarin mo ako, Panginoon. Kaya nga sabi natin, biyaya lamang kung bakit tayo tumayo sa harapan ng Diyos at sinabi natin nagkasala talaga tayo sa Diyos. At kailangan parusahan tayo ng Diyos. 
Hindi natin inaasahan, di ba kakaibahan? Hindi ko inaasahan na, hindi ko na inaasahan. Na hindi ako parurusahan ng Diyos. Because I'm guilty. Kaya nga, na, biyaya lamang, bukang bibig ng isang mananampalataya na hindi ako pinarusahan. Pero may pinarusahan ng Diyos. Ang kanyang buktong na anak na si Jesus para sa iyong kasalanan. You see? That's their religion. Distorting. Were they distorting the truth? Yes. Accusing God? Yes. Accusing each other? Yes. Excusing themselves from accountability? Yes. Pareho silang dalawa. Kasi pareho ang epekto ng kasalanan sa buhay ng tao. The guilt of both had been clearly established. What can we learn from this, brethren? Hinto lang muna tayo doon. Unti-unti nating pag-isipan. What can we learn from this confrontation with this God? You see, the way God came to Adam and Eve is a model of how He comes to fallen humanity ever since. Hindi nyo na po po na. Kaya nga minsan nagtatanong, ba't kaya hindi pa yung iba na hindi mo malaman ang isip? Minsan naisip nila kung may masamang tao na may ginagawang masama sa kanilang buhay, naisip na, ba't kaya kunin ng Diyos na lang to. Paano niya inaya? Mabuhay kong kapitbahay ko na to. Puro ka perwisyo na ginagawa sa buhay. Sa neighbor sa food namin. If you understand who God is, just look at how God came to Adam and Eve. God came to them patiently. Diba? Ano sabi ni Peter? God is long-suffering. Nagbago ba? Peter understood. Why? Because Peter was a stubborn. God came to them with care. Diba? He knows how to address. Bakit ganun siya, ganun niya, ba't ganun ang ginawa niya kay Adam at hindi kay Eve? Because Adam is the head. He is the representative head. Adam could have done something, but he did not exercise his headship, di ba? He had to have dominion. Alam niya yung nangyayari, hindi man niya iligtas si Eve, na deceive. He did not do anything. Walang action. It, it seems na nandun siya nung nangyayari. Kasi naibigay ka agad sa kanya And God has to come strongly to him because it is to him that he gave the commandment. Very clear. And he was not deceived. Eh, kung man you you have chosen your wife more than me, what would you do? Diba, so magulo nga eh. Mas, so, mas gusto mo si Lola? Dito ka sa Lola, lumayas ka rito, huwag ka lang magpakita sa akin. Eh, mas... Gusto mo pala lola mo eh, or lolo mo kaysa sa akin. Di doon ka. Di ba we can be harsh as parents toward our children? O kaya ano? Malak- ano ka na? Kaya mo na? So, di, kung gusto mo lumayas, di lumayas ka. So what? But God is na. He did not let him. Kailangan ng kini, na-deceive siya eh. Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, it was not that willful on its part pumasok sa temptation na nahuli siya hanggang sa nabola siya. You want to be God? You need to eat that fruit. But he wants to be like God. Wala naman masama, pila maga. Oh, 
allá y no le gusta ni a comer yo. Ese es prohibición. And God comes to sinner personally. Kaya nga meron tayong personal testimony. Iba-iba, di ba? Pag pinatayo mo lahat ng miyembro ng church natin, iba-iba yung sasabihin nila. How they encountered God. Because God remains to be. Kahit na rebelde na tayo, kahit wala tayo pakialam sa Diyos, kahit alam niya, nagkukunwari ka lang na naniniwala ka sa akin, But, ka, but God will always come with the truth that you are lost and you need to be found. Yun ang hindi, hindi babaguhin ng Panginoon. God is not like what others are saying. So don't think na simply because siya yung chief of sinners, yun nga yung model ni, ni Paul. Paul is saying he is the chiefest of sinners because of what he has done. And every time he thinks about his suffering, he would remember the suffering that he caused to the saints. Kaya nga na isang bagay yun na nabear niya. Ako nga, yun ang personal suspicion ko dun sa burden niya, yung, yung torn. Kasi parati niyang, ano ba yung parati niyang binabanggit? Sa akin, parati ko nababasa kay Paul, parati niyang pagka yung kasalanan na yun. I am a persecutor of the church. When Stephen was killed, I was there. I even pursued them from house to house. Even when they are in different places, I ask permission and pursue them. Huwag oh, kalimutan niya yun. Hindi ko makalimutan. Kaya nga, I'm not dogmatic about that, brethren. Suspicion ko lang yun. Sa pagbabasa ko, pag nag express ng damdamin ng kabigatan si Paul, hindi niya kabigatan yung persecution eh. Wala siya sinasabi no, I, I was a stone. Parang very light eh. I was a stone. We were hungry. We were shipwrecked. You know. Pero pag pinag-usapan na yung buhay niya ako, hindi ako Diyos, hindi ako ano. I am... The chiefest of sinners. I persecuted. I sought them. I killed them. I set them to be killed. Ah, oh, di ba? Mm-hmm. So, because God will come with the truth. And Paul could not get off with that truth. It's a reality. Kaya nga sabi niya, only by the grace of God. Only by the grace of God. Because that is what God wants to show to each one of us. And secondly, brethren, remember, repentance in any man will come slow. For man hates to admit he is wrong. Why is this? Because of the effect of sin. And so you have also to learn to wait as God waits. God probes deeply. God works. Eh tayo, binamadali natin sa iba. Oh, dahil ano, pagod na kayong manalangin para sa inyong mga mahal sa buhay na hanggang ngayon hindi pa rin ligtas. Sumuko na tayo dahil ah, talaga masyadong patay ang puso. Ni ayaw na magsimba, ni ayaw na magbasa ng Bible. Sabi mo, siguro, apply mo ng mali. The truth that God gave, you will apply like like Adam and say, Siguro talagang ano, hindi sila elect. You see? No? Is that the teaching in the Bible? That the reason why they are not saved is because they are not the elect? Show me one word. They are not saved because of the hardness of their heart. Because of their continuous rejection of Christ. It's not because they are not elect. I would not say that to anyone. I would continually say to you, who are not Christian, it's because you have no true love for Christ. 
because you continually reject Him to be the Lord over your life. The one who will tell you what to do and what not to do. It's not because you're not elect. God comes to you. God is doing you so many good. He allows you to hear the gospel. Sunday after Sunday, He invites you to come and believe on His Son. Come, freely come. He's not asking you anything. He's not asking you to give money. He's not asking you to give up everything in your life. He simply asks you what reality is. You're a slave of sin. You are unable. But my son is able. If you come to him and you call upon him, sin may have clung to you so much and you cannot get rid out of it. Do you want to get rid of that? Come to my son. And my son will set you free. And you shall be free indeed. So maingat po tayo. Baka mga instrumento tayo ng deception ng jablo. You have to be precise kung ano lang yung word na nandun. Yun ang ipayag natin. Huwag tayo magdagdag ng kung ano-ano. Gumawa ng konklusyon sa mga doktrinang naririnig natin. Maingat tayo dyan. In this church, What I wanted you to learn is to cling to what is very clear. If others are doing it so systematically, let them do it. Don't judge them. But as for you and me, when the Bible is clear, no question. But if it is not there, we will not presume it is there. We'll just wait. When God presents clearly to us, it is there. But when it is not, there is something we can believe that is there. And when we believe it, I guarantee you, you're not out of the truth. Kahit sabihin mong, walang covenant of ganito dyan, at karamihan nagsasabi, don't worry about that. Ang mahalaga, ano yung nabasa mo, yun ang pangawa ka mo. Ito yung malinaw lang sa verse. Kung mahilig kayo sa implied, di pahala kayo. Dito lang ako, hindi ko kaya yung mga ganun. You see, you will never be lost. Never. And remember this, when your mind begins to question, if it is a question of faith, of growing and understanding more, God, entertain that question. But if it is a question that seems to justify something you're doing, that you know is questionable, you're entering into a very dangerous situation. If you enter into the temptation and the snare that the devil has set for you, it would be very difficult to get out of it. Kaya nga prayer natin, ano? You always pray. As you begin to wake up in the morning, Lord, do not lead me to temptation. Because many times, many, many times, Lord, when I was able to enter that temptation, I was not able to get out of it. Parati na lang, patawad, Panginoon, patawad, Panginoon. Ba't ka nagpapatawad? Kasi hindi ka nakalabas eh. Kasi hindi ka rin nag-play na you should not be led into that temptation. Samata lang sabi ng Panginoon, this is how you should pray. Lead me not into temptation. Pag hindi na kaya, flee! Diba? Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Yun ang mga solusyon. Resist it. Resist it. And may God help us in this day. Because God did not let us torture. And we should thank Him that He has given us the true helper.
and He is residing in you and me if you're a Christian, it is the Holy Spirit. So don't quench Him. Instead, allow Him to enable you, to empower you to live victoriously in this very difficult world. May God bless His Word to each one of us this morning. Marami pong salamat muli, Panginoon, sa inyong mga salita sa amin. Tulungan po ninyo kami na kung ano mang kaunawaan, Panginoon, ang hinayaan mo maging klaro sa amin. Manatili nawa ito sa aming puso at patuloy na maging instrumento ng aming kabanalan at patuloy na pagsulong sa aming pananampalataya, pagtitiwala at pagsunod sa iyong anak na si Jesus. Dinggin mo, Panginoon, at tugunan kami dahil nag struggle pa rin kami, Panginoon, sa kasalanan. But we are grateful even for the Holy Spirit that is in us, our true help that has come from you. Where shall our help come? It has come from you and we are grateful, Lord, for the spirit of truth that you have given to us. And may you continually allow the truths that we learn to bear fruit and much fruit to the glory of the one who gave his life for us, in whose name we pray. Amen.